Hello and welcome back to Concert Critiques in Cars with Emily. So I am super excited. This is two videos in technically one day, but two days because I'm definitely not going to post this until probably tomorrow. But, um, but yeah, so let's get into it. I'm so excited about this show. I cannot wait. Um, so interestingly, the bill said that well, the first opener was going to be the Cold Seas and when the guy first got on stage as the first opener, he for sure did not say cold seas. And I was like, what did he say? And so again, like throughout the show, I was like, he still didn't say cold seas. And then I was like specifically listening for it and I tried to understand what he was saying and I for sure could not, but eventually I got the name. So no worries guys, I did my due diligence. And um, so anyway, the opener was eight graves and they were like, so fantastic. I really, really, really enjoyed like every part of their show. So um, it was kind of like the very first like line or two, it was almost like awkward because I don't know, in my opinion, there was definitely like a little bit of like a mess up or something, or it was just like starting to sing and just he like wasn't really like I don't know but it was just like a quick little stutter step and then after that it was like totally fine and he did great for the rest of the song I really really liked that song um and he gave um like randomly came to the side of stage and gave someone he clearly knew a high five um so that was pretty just like again random touch um and so I really liked the first verse of the second song and I really liked the lyrics of the bridge. Uh, so the chorus was, I wanna hang with my friends. And so the lyrics now after I realized what it was about, um, <laughs> totally makes sense. But um, so he wrapped the microphone cord like around his throat and then was like, you know, I wanna hang with my friends. And then he mouthed like, get it. And I was like, oh. Huh? Now I get it. Um, so I thought that was really funny. And again, just like a like little fun touch that I was like, yep, nope, totally didn't know that until you said it, sir. Um, <laughs> for the third song, I really loved like the chorus. It had that like um, quicker like pace uh, that I like and then like had really good lyrics. The fourth song was definitely like the heaviest of the, four of the song so far. Definitely had like a heavier feel to it. Um, and during that song, like a fight broke out. Like this is just kind of a side note, but so a fight broke out in the crowd. And again, the crowd was like not that big at this point, but I legit thought it was someone trying to start like a mini mosh pit. And I was like, oh fun. Like he's like pushing the girl to like start a pit because it was a heavier song. No, it was a legit fight. People were throwing punches and it was like, what happened? Um, but they kept singing and he did a great job. And I mean, obviously they addressed it later, but um, really I thought that they handled it well. Um, and yeah, so I loved um, like the next song had like this slower start with like almost like this creepy like vibe to it. I'm, I know I'm not explaining it well, but it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, I really liked that fifth song. I thought that was really good. Um, and then, so the next song, it was like, uh, at the beginning. I don't know why, like, I, maybe it was just because I really liked the fifth song. And so the sixth song was just like, I was like, oh, I mean, all right, it's okay. But man, that chorus came and I was sucked in. It was so good. And even after that, like, I don't know what it was about that first verse, but it was like, after that first verse, the song was gold. It was so fantastic. Um, really, really catchy chorus, and I really liked the rest of the song. Um, the next song um, had, again, that, like, kind of creepy-ish feel to it, uh, at least during the verses, um, and then had, like, a heavier feel during the chorus, and so I really liked that. Um, again, I thought just, like, really, like, kind of did such a good job of having, like, these, like, heavier songs, um, and then having, like, a less heavy part of the song very catchy at times so yeah that was really good um the next song was a slower song which um at least for the verses um and then it had like a more full sounding chorus so again like really liked that and then um, really really loved the lyrics in the chorus for the last song thought it was really good so really liked this band again <laughs> a little hard to understand what the band name was but I figured it out, I got there, and i um, definitely gonna check them out. Eight Graves, they were really good. So then after Eight Graves was um, Never Loved, and um, really, really fun first chorus. Uh, they had like a, like, oh my gosh, I'm, again, not a singer, guys. This is why I am pretty 
speaking and not doing. Um, but they had like, uh, like, like part with Dada and like D's and stuff like that. And so I really liked that part. I thought that was good. Um, the singer like came to the barricade and um, to sing the song, uh, uh, to, the, to sing the first verse of the next, of this first song. Um, and no, that must have been the second song. Is it? Yeah, sorry. So the second song, the singer of Never Loved came down to the barricade. And um, yeah, it definitely had like a more like uh, a heavier feel than the first song, but it was like super fun. And he took like a girl's phone from the front row and brought it onto the stage and took a video. And so that was pretty cool. And then he sang with his mic and the bass's mic at the same time. So the lead singer is definitely like a showman. He definitely like put on a fun show and was trying to get the crowd super involved. So that was really cool. And then after the second song, he told us a fun fact, which actually is a fun fact. Um, so apparently they recorded like a bunch of their records and EPs in College Park, but this was their first show in Baltimore. And so I thought that was pretty cool that like, I got to witness this like awesome cool thing um and then they kept like referencing things about Maryland that I was like oh yeah they like recorded here so it was cool that they kind of like had this like local like hometowny feel even though it wasn't a hometown show for them um the next song was really good it was heavier but still really good um the guitarist made this like super cheesy joke about the gas leak that apparently had happened previously and almost canceled the show I would have been devastated if the show was canceled because it was so good um but fortunately it wasn't and so um yeah made a really really cheesy joke which was fantastic very funny um and then he had a twilight cheer off and so <laughs> it's interesting because like so the lead singer of this band like would take like you know go get a drink and so the guitarist and the bassist were left to have banter on stage and so part of that banter was deciding who was team Edward and who was team Jake. Guys I don't know Twilight <laughs> but um no one really participated so that was kind of lame but the effort was there so that was nice. Um anyway then they played a song called On and On It Goes and I loved the pace of the verse and um then it got like really heavy for the chorus but I really liked the verse for that one. I thought it was really, really fantastic. Um, and then they made a shout out to Scorpios during that, the bridge of that song. I'm pretty sure he's at Scorpio, I'm pretty sure. And then randomly, legit made eye contact with me and I'm a Scorpio, so I was like, oh damn, how did he know? He knows. We clearly had this connection. Um, so I thought that was funny. <laughs> Again, that was definitely like a personal greatness moment but yeah um and then the basis like added at the end about like like a line about Baltimore um so that was again just like a fun little touch after that they played a song called Dead Inside and he gave us like a little bit of a backstory and saying that they haven't played it in two years but apparently two fans that were there tonight um who had like been fans from the beginning had asked them to play it and the fact that they had like recorded it and it had tracked which I don't know what that means um so if you know what that means please feel free to comment um and it had tracked um and so because of that they decided to play it and I actually really liked the song I thought it was very good um and I think he used one of the girls names in the song instead of uh, maybe maybe it was originally in the song I don't really know I'd have to go back and listen to it but it was really really good I really liked the song um so I'm glad they played it because I don't know if many people have seen that song recently um then they played you're killing me a song called you're killing me and he came to the barricade and then he like sat on top of the barricade for a little bit which was kind of cool um and then he just walked the rest of the barricade and back on stage um i really liked the verses of this song and then like towards the end of the song he ran like behind the bassist and jumped on top of um the amp uh, he actually had to clear some things off the amp, so that was pretty funny. Um, yeah, so for like the bridge at the end of that song. Then after that, they played a song called God Damn, and um, loved the guitar, like right before the chorus. It was so fantastic that first time. Oh my, it was so good. I really, really liked the guitar there. Um, loved, again, they did like a D, like a la di da 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 thing, so I loved that. That was really, really good in this song as well. Um, he asked the 
the crowds with their hand back and forth. He came to the barricade and interacted with a few people, like specifically at the barricade. Um, really great song, and I really liked it for their last song. I thought that was a good choice. It definitely got the crowd moving and going, and again, just a lot of little details that the singer, you know, jumped into the barricade and stuff, and that, so that was really good. Okay, so now let's get to the reason for this entire show, which is so good. Um, all right, so Armor for Sleep was playing um, What to Do When You're Dead, um, because it's, well, it was 15 years, now it's 16 years because of COVID. So they were doing a 15 year anniversary tour for that album, and uh, like, of course, I totally had to buy tickets, and I would have seen them <laughs> in Georgia and Florida. But unfortunately, I only got to see them in Baltimore. Um, and actually, after the show, I happened to bump into the bassist's father and brother. And so one of the questions they asked was, are you going to any other shows on the tour? And my answer was, no. It could have been yes, but no. Um, and who knows? Maybe they would have like let me come backstage or something. That would have been so cool. Okay, anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah. So at the beginning of the show, they had this recording and it had like a voice talking about reality and the universe and stuff like that. Um, and then the lead singer came out by himself and played just like a little bit of Very Invisible. And then the rest of the band came out and they went into Car Underwater. <sighs> okay. So I didn't really write a lot of notes about some of these songs because let's face it, it was just so good. They were just so so good and I remember like five years ago when they or six years ago when they came out on this tour for the 10 year anniversary one of my critiques in my video was that they didn't play the album from start to finish well they played the album from start to finish and it was just oh it's just so great it was just so wonderful it really like it's an album you don't skip a single song on and seeing it live from start to finish was just like so fantastic. So anyway, Car Under Water of course was amazing. They rocked out. It was just so fantastic. Um, and then right after that, they did The Truth About Heaven. Um, and so they let the crowd sing a little bit of that, which I loved. Um, then Remember to Feel Real, which was just so good. <laughs> I like, again, I'm sure that you're watching this and maybe a little annoyed because I don't have many notes other than it was just so good. But guys, it was so good. It was just so good. Um, so yeah, so anyway, for Remember to Feel Real, they changed the pace of like the chorus, the first line of the chorus, and it just like, oh my God, it, it was amazing. It was so, so good. I love Remember to Feel Real. It's one of my favorites from them and so, just those little tiny subtle changes just made it so fantastic. Um, and then that after that song, um, they took a break to say hello. Um, he was talking about how like today was a weird day because of what was happening in the venue and then the fight and everything. So it was a weird day. Um, and then he said, but sometimes like the weird things get like the best. And so he's also telling us that he's never had a show almost get canceled because I guess there was like too much steam or gas in the pipeline. I don't really know what happened, but yeah, definitely a unique situation. Hello, Baltimore. Um, then after that, they played Awkward Last Words and he changed the pace of the bridge for both the lyrics and the music part. And so I loved that and it was just fantastic. Um, and then the bassist was amazing. He, the bassist was like super into every song and it was so great. But in this particular song, he like came up into the stage and like held his guitar, uh, bass, sorry, held his bass and like played it like in the air. It was great. He was so fun. Watching him was fantastic. Pretty much every song, but particularly, particularly in this one, it was really fun. Um, after that, they played Stay on the Ground. And um, I just like, again, I know a lot of people forget that at the end of that song, there's just like this chunk of music and seeing it live is just so fantastic. It really is so good live. Like seeing just that music being played and just being in a room of people who are just like enjoying it is just so good. And and again, like on the album, it's just like, you're like, oh, okay, like it's just music at the end of the song. Cause it kind of like stops and then there's that musical part, but man, when you see it live, oh, it's just so fantastic. So fantastic. 
so then after that they played a quick little flight um, and that's a slower song and so I loved the sound of the guitar live and so I think what they did a really good job with again I mean this album is pretty fantastic but you obviously have some slower songs and maybe some that start slow and then get heavy but for this song in particular it still managed to feel like it was like you were at a rock show like I don't feel like it was like a moment where people are like all right well I guess I'm just gonna like sit down or take my phone out not pay attention it was still felt like we were at a rock show and it was just so fantastic um after that one of my other favorites the more you talk the less I hear the bridge was so good I love the lyrics of the bridge and seeing them live it was just fantastic the whole song is great, but particularly I really am a fan of the bridge. After that, it was Basement Ghost singing. And so again, it's like, this is definitely one of those songs that has that slower beginning, but then afterwards it does kind of like pick up. And so I really liked how in this song, it, well, for the chorus it picks up. And so I really like how in this song, particularly, they changed the second verse and the second chorus. And it was so good, so fantastic. I really, really liked this song. Um, after that was Walking at Night Alone. Um, there was a little bit of feedback in the beginning because it was just the lead singer. Um, but again, this was definitely another example of having that like slower feeling song feel like you were still very much at a rock show. After that, it was I've Been Right All Along. Um, so fantastic, really loved the bridge. Uh, the bassist was totally, totally rocking out for this one, like for like above and beyond, Just so fantastic. Really, really loved that song. It was, it was great. Um, and the basses just made it so much more fun because he was having such a good time. Um, then he told a story about playing at the auto bar in Baltimore and breaking a guitar that his mom bought him. And afterwards she was like, you broke my guitar. Um, and how he was just like, you know, young and silly. Um, but yeah, and then so after that was obviously the end of the album which is the end of a fraud. Again, you get like this slower start, but you still feel so full. And then you get like that super heavy, crazy part. And then you get that end where it brings back the lyrics from the beginning of the album. And you're just like, yeah, that's really good. <laughs> so it was fantastic. Really liked that. Um, and then they went off stage for a little bit and then came back with, um, it was the lead singer and the guitarist with the lead singer had an acoustic guitar. So they played raindrops really really great rendition um i loved the musical part at the bridge i thought that was really well done and uh, it was just it was really well done um and then the rest of the band came back on and they played end of the world and i feel like this could have just been as popular as uh ocean avenue by yellow card because it just has that like fiddle part or violin part to it and it's just so good. The lyrics are good. The song is good. Like, why aren't they as famous? They're so good. Um, but really liked that song. Thought it was definitely a good uh, thing to have during the encore. Um, and then after that, they went into a full version of Very Invisible, which I loved. I love that they brought it back. Interesting choice not to, well, so it was interesting. During, right as they started playing that song, the lead singer, they all kind of started laughing, and so I wonder if they had whip or switched the this song with the next one, and they had wanted to like end the set with this. Because let's face it, we all know they're not ending the set with either one of these next two songs, but this song or the next one, because you know it's not their like bigger song. Um, but it was interesting because they kind of just started laughing, and I think they just like went with it. So they, I wonder if they had meant to kind of you know, like come full circle, right? They started the set with a piece of this song and then they were gonna end like the majority of the set with it. Um, but whatever, they played it then. They did a fantastic job. Um, really, really, this song, like uh, such a good job going back and forth between like the heavier, like more full sounding parts and then the slower parts just incredible like I didn't even realize how often that happened in this song and seeing it live tonight I was like oh my gosh like this is just incredible like they just you feel so full and you're like so energized but then you like are still energized and it's slower and it's just fantastic they did a really nice job with the transitions between the two and then they played Williamsburg um really 
really great song to dance to. Really liked the instrumental part of the bridge. Really, really liked that. Um, and then, of course, they ended with <laughs> uh, Dream to Make Believe because, let's face it, that song is fantastic. And, of course, they were going to end their entire night with it. But, again, I wonder if they were going to switch um, Very Invisible and Williamsburg. That makes sense to me but anyway they were laughing they had a good time with it so if that was in mistake it was not a terrible one um anyway so for dream to make believe oh my gosh guys this is like the perfect ending to this set for sure super like rock out song you cannot help but jump up and down i loved every second of it um during the bridge the lead singer of never loved came out and played the guitar and while he was playing the guitar the lead singer of armor for sleep came to the barricade and sang the rest of the song at the barricade well he went back on stage but sang part of the song on the barricade and so yeah it was just like super fantastic i really loved that little touch at the end um so yeah oh my gosh guys this show i literally have not one bad thing to say not one bad thing to say about a show. I don't know that that's ever happened before. I I mean, seriously, I loved both openers. I never heard their music before, but both of them were so fantastic. Particularly, I really liked Eight Graves. Um, I thought they were really fantastic. I mean, Never Loved was very good, but for some reason, Eight Graves just like hit so like, uh, like on the nose for me. Um, really really liked them I, again but I have like no complaints about never loved either and then I have no complaints about armor for sleep there was what a little bit of feedback that like one time <laughs> for that one song ah oh, gosh I don't know I mean I could this be like the perfect show I don't know the only reason <clears throat> I mean the only the only, my only, like, eh about giving it a 10 is that, like, technically, if I got to choose who opened, it would not have been these. I mean, they were so good, but I would probably pick a band that I knew the music to. But can I really take off for that? Just, like, that's not their fault. I don't know, guys. Um, all right, I think just because... I think I'm gonna give this a, oh gosh, I don't know. I'm like wasting so much time, sorry. I think I'm gonna give this a 9.75, very close to a perfect score. Um, again, I maybe would have changed a few things if I had, was in control, but I mean, it's a pretty flawless show. Both openers who I've never heard before were very, very good. Um, really, really very good. And then it was Armor for Sleep playing an album that I love from start to finish, which was so good. The order of those songs when they first put them on that album, what great choices they made. And just, I'm so glad that they took, again, I'm just going to pretend that they saw my video and took my feedback and decided to play from start to finish for this next round of tours. But, oh my gosh, just so good. Just so fantastic. And then all of the songs in the encore were fantastic. Maybe I wouldn't have picked Williamsburg if it was me, but I mean, can't complain. That song was really fun to dance to, so I really liked the bridge. So yeah, 9.75. Um, please let me know what you think. Comment, like, subscribe. Have you seen this show um, at a different point in the tour? Do you want to see them? Did you want to see them? Please comment. I love hearing from you guys and I will see you guys next time, but it will not be tomorrow, so don't worry. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching and have a nice night.